In this video, we are going to discuss ethnography. Ethnography is a research methodology. A methodology can be understood as a system of methods underpinned by a particular view of the world. The term methodology can also be applied to the study of how we research. In doing so, understanding that how we research something effectively changes the results of what we research. Ethnography, as a methodology, aims to study the way people interact and communicate within certain contexts. Ethnography can be conducted using a variety of research methods that include participant observation, field notes, interviews, surveys, or analysing historical documents from the context in question. Ethnography emerged from the discipline of anthropology, but spread into other academic disciplines such as communications and cultural studies, sociology, linguistics, and many more. As such, it is often coupled with, or grounded in, the theoretical approaches of each discipline. For example, one might conduct an ethnography of popular music fans to understand concert behaviour within a particular subculture, then couple the results with the theory informed by Pierre Bourdieu's cultural capital, as just one example. Originally, in anthropological research, ethnography required intensive fieldwork in local communities, usually of non-Western cultures, in order to gain deeper insight into social processes. At its core, however, ethnography seeks to interpret lived experience, as observed by the researcher. One of the major concepts in ethnography is paying attention to how people describe their lived experience in order to interpret these meanings and gain understanding. Yet, not just any descriptions will do. According to Clifford Geertz, ethnography is concerned with thick descriptions, or the uncovering of the multiplicity of experience, as opposed to more quantitative yet ultimately superficial accounts of a community or context. Lastly, a methodology can be directed by the researcher's understanding of the nature of reality itself, or what we might call a paradigm. For example, scientific methodologies are usually informed by the positivist paradigm, that is, an understanding that knowledge must be based on what we can observe, measure and quantify. At the other end of the spectrum is a paradigm such as constructionism, which holds that our realities may appear to be natural and fixed, when in fact they are only constructed by social and cultural interactions. In any case, a researcher must have a systematic way of collating their findings so that they can share those findings with others in the academic community in a way that makes sense and in a way that others can follow. Moreover, a researcher must also understand that the paradigm of their inquiry will dictate what kind of findings may emerge. Thank you for watching.